Hello everyone and welcome to my new video of how to make your own discord bot in python so let's get started so guys in today's video we're gonna see how we can create button menus along with that i'm gonna give a quick example of how to make slash commands in discord.py 2.0 because many of you have been asking for that lately so let's right get into it This is the basic bot class i'm creating an instant and running the bot now make sure you have the master bus installed and it is one of the latest commit because in the recent times there have been several comments made by the developer and they're required so first of all we're going to have a setup hook which will define a property of the bot as cell that session which is aihttp client session secondly we'll just loop through the files in the certain folder if you want to load cogs from you know subfolders then also you could just create a nested loop and at last you need to sync your tree and make sure you don't unnecessarily sync your tree you could just remove the glilled object if you want to make your commands global and make sure you close the command through cell that session is just a good practice now go to your cog and now a set of functions is also asynchronous and as you can see i've defined the guild which is a list you could pass more guilds and they will be automatically synced for that Secondly, this is an async function, so we are of course going to await it. Now, as you can see, I've imported app commands from my Discord and I could just simply create a command through that. You could give it a name and description. Let's say I give it a description and we can just say, you could give it a name or maybe how about I give it timeout only, timeout test. It's going to have self, interaction, member, a time and a reason i can even make this using using you need to import typing and using that you could just say typing dot optional and you could just pass int in the square brackets and this will be an optional parameter but i would say how about we make this string reason should be optional and we could provide a default value like the way we used to and that is how you make choices you could even separate the choices for each of the argument separated by a comma. This is going to be the name which is going to be shown and this is the value which is going to be interpreted by the bot. It's just a key value system and it's perfect. Now this is just a test function. I'm not going to go in the details and I'm just timing out the user like we used to. And if the user was successfully timed out, I'm just going to say successfully timed out for the reason and time being. And if not, then something went wrong. And now I can just time out my function. This is the description. I could just select any member, five minutes, and any reason. I have not provided any reason, and it has timed out the user for 300 minutes. I've created this sample code for other examples. You could just go with it, go through it. I'm not going to go in details. You could just pause the video and see it because the main point of this video was to show buttons with menus. So let's try get into it. Now, outside the cogs, I've created a file named button menu. You could use this file anytime, anywhere you want to create as many button menus as you want. Now, let's create a class and you could name it anything like button menu. It's going to inherit from view and it's in it is going to have a few parameters like pages. You're going to have to pass a list of the pages like you could even pass embeds uh, with like two or three embeds files or just text you could pass anything basically but that has to be a list and next we're gonna have a float like for the amount of timeout you know now this user parameter is interesting if we do not pass this user then other people can also interact with your command but if you don't want them to interact then you will have to pass the user and of course in the super init we're gonna pass the timeout is equal to timeout now we're going to have a few variables like self.current page which is going to be the present page and it's of course going to start with zero. Secondly, we're going to have pages, then user and the length. Length will be the maximum amount like the last page. We're subtracting one from the total number of pages because in indexing the count starts from zero. And we're going to start creating with the button. So button will be ui.button. We're going to have an emoji. Emoji, I'm going to have a custom emoji. You could have default emojis as well and a style style can be discord dot button style and i'm gonna keep this one blurple it's your choice anyways it's just the ui and then i'm just gonna call it first page 
Now this name doesn't necessarily mean anything, right? And the first parameter is gonna be the interaction, second is gonna be the button. Now for now I'm gonna pause because we're gonna create a function to switch to pages. Now I've created four more buttons. One will be before page, then stop page, then next page, then last page, and I've created a pattern of their colors. You'll see that later, of course. And the stop button, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say for I and myself are children, which is gonna be all of the buttons, and I'm gonna just disable them all. And then I'm just gonna make sure that the interaction is updated. And at last, I'm just gonna stop the embed. Now let's create an update function. So I'm just gonna say async def update. It's gonna have a self parameter, then page, which is gonna be an int. And I'm gonna make sure to update the current page to the new page. And I'm gonna say if my page is zero. Now if you see when the page is zero, then our first page and before page, these are gonna be disabled because we cannot go further beyond it. You could loop through them it is really simple to implement that. I'm gonna not do that because I find it uncanny. So I'm just gonna disable the first two buttons. So at each loop, I'm gonna make sure that the first two are disabled to true and the last two are enabled. Similarly, in the LF, I'm just gonna say if page is equal to my cell.length. Cell.length is the last page in text, if you remember. And similarly, I'm just gonna enable the first two buttons and disable the last two. And in the else condition, I'm just gonna enable them all like if the buttons are bit in between of them. Now let's create a get page function. So this is just gonna return us the information regarding each page. So I'm just gonna say get page, like you could just call it anything. It could be anything. If you see, the page could be a list, a string, an embed, a, you know, an attachment, file attachment, discord.file. So we're gonna check the instance according to easy. So I'm just gonna say if is instance of my page is a string. Then what I'm gonna return is, I'm gonna return three things. First is gonna be my content. So the content, as we know, is string. So I'm gonna pause the page. Next, we do not have any embed. So I'm just gonna return an empty array. So I'll show you what do I mean by this later. And third, we do not have any files. So I'm just gonna pass an empty list again. Similarly, I'm just gonna check if the instance page is an embed. Now, if it is embed, then what I'm gonna return is, I'm not gonna return anything in the place of string. So let's let it be none. And since there can be more than one embeds, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return a list of this page. And thirdly, we are not having any files. So I'm just gonna return an empty list. And now we can have instance of a file. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna return none in the place of content because there is no content. Secondly, we do not have any embeds and empty list. And third, we can have multiple files. That is why I'm just gonna return a list of these page. Now there could be one more condition that a user has passed the list. So I'm just gonna say if is instance of my page is a list. Now this is typing dot list. I've just done list comprehension that for X in page and instance of that page should be discarded embed and all of them should be embed. If all of them are embeds, then we're not gonna return a list but rather just a page because it is a list only. And if all of them are files, then we're just gonna return page rather than the file. It's just similar to the above ones. If the case is not either of them, then I'm just gonna raise error, say meaning you cannot have two separate files and embeds, you need to have a single type. In this else condition, you're gonna have an error and you can do the error handling. I'm just gonna skip for now. Now let's create a function to jump to a certain page. I'm just defined show page. It has page, it has interaction because we're gonna have to edit the embed now first of all we're going to update our data so i'm just going to say update and i'm going to pass my page which is passed in this function as well now i'm going to get the page through this so i'm going to say content embeds and files is equal to now i'm going to call this function so i'm just going to say await myself dot get page and now i'll have to pass the page not the page number so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say cell dot pages and i'm going to pass the page number so this is just going to return me the page at last i'm just going to say content is equal to content embeds is equal to embeds attachments is equal to files or a empty list because they can be none and view will be equal to cell so as in to update all these changes like in my update and get page just simply disable our first and second buttons at the start of the function so that the user cannot go behind it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change these buttons callback. So I'm just gonna say await myself dot show button like show page. Now this is first page so of course it's gonna be the zero page number and then I'll have to pass the interaction. 
interaction is this, right? And in the next, it is before page. So before is going to be one behind. So I'm just going to say cell dot current page minus one. I'm going to copy this and paste it here. Next page is going to be plus one. And again, the last page is going to be not this, but cell dot length. Now length is of course going to be of, to that of last page. Now we are also going to have the interaction check at last. So I'm just going to say async the interaction check. It's going to be this call dot interaction so yep and we're not going to have the super so first of all we're going to check if the user has passed this user variable we're going to say if cell dot user meaning that only this user should be able to use that specific or operate with that specific button view you know and then we're going to check if my if my interaction dot user is not equal to my cell dot user if not then i'm just gonna say interaction that respond or send message this command is for someone else and you could of course have a custom message so th since this interaction check failed we're gonna say return false like in everything else we're just gonna return true and also you can disable all the buttons in timeout that is really similar to what i did just now you could do that now i've quickly created the slash command which is pages and it has an interaction and that is it Furthermore, I've created a pages. Now, as you can see, the first page will just have one. Second page is a list of two pages. Third page is just simple. Fourth page is also simple. And fifth page is not an embed, but rather just text. So first of all, we're going to import from button menus, the button menu. I'm going to say await my interaction dot response dot send message, the embeds. We're going to have embeds. Now, why am I saying embeds? The first message, like the first embed, could be a single embed or double embed, and we do not want to risk it. So what are we going to do is, like, let's say you do not know or you do not care. We're going to have a secure code which works for both the scenarios. So I'm just going to say pages dot zero if is instance of my pages zero is a list, and the else condition I'm just going to say a list of my pages zero. Rest, I'm going to pass the view and view will be my button menu, which I just imported and pages. And this is just the timeout. Also, you can mention the user if you do not want anyone else to operate with the button menu. So I'm just going to pass the interaction that user so as in to test it. Now, hoping there are no errors. Let's run it. As you can see, I've got first page and the first two buttons are disabled. And this page has two embeds and both of them are working perfectly fine. We have a page three, we have a page four, we have a page five. And as you can see, this is just a text and last two buttons are disabled. I can go to the first page. I could end the interaction. And as you can see, all the buttons are disabled. So guys, that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike if you didn't. Subscribe and share for more. And I'll see you guys in the next one.